Is it a 99 Nova Defender or is it an Ineos Grenadier? I don't know. You tell me. So this has definitely spiked my interest and I had to talk about it. Definitely looks like the 90s Land Rover. Down to the front fascia, looks just like the Land Rover's front fascia, but a little bit different, a little bit more modern. And it's got almost the same body shape. You have this huge front windshield similar to the Land Rover and the three A, B and C pillar windows are the same kind of sizing and shape as the old Land Rover. The fenders are the same boxy utilitarian and you got the same crease going down the car in the middle as same does the Land Rover basically Aeneas the chemical and oil company's owner Jim Radcliffe decided that he wanted to see basically a modern Land Rover Defender back down to his roots with this design he definitely brought modern utilitarian and simplicity onto one car it's a body on frame design, three locking differentials. It's high and low, a BMW B57 or a B58 engine, a ZF gearbox, which is known to kind of learn your driving technique, your car seats, and they partner with Magna, who has done the engineering for the G-Wagon. So that's something. So right away, I absolutely love the look of this SUV. Now they do have plans to start selling this SUV in the USA by 2023. They have hired the Jaguar Land Rover and Daimler marketing executive Greg Clark. The biggest hurdle that they're trying to get to for them to start selling it in USA by 2023 is finding a headquarters here in USA and somehow figuring out how to supply dealerships in all of the 50 states in the USA. But in the USA, they're only going to have just a three liter turbocharged and six engine from BMW. And how much will this cost a US buyer? 75 to $120,000. That's a lot of money. The Mercedes G-Wagon starts $130,000, which is a lot more luxurious and probably just as capable. And the 2021 Land Rover Defenders, and it's a much more luxurious car. However, that's what sets this Grenadier apart from these two vehicles. If you look at the interior, it is very rugged. It's very simple and kind of straight to the point. You don't have a huge touchscreen display that only you can manage with a knob or your finger. It has all these buttons on the dash that is as basic as they can get, but yet it's still modern, which is something I really like a lot. And same with the roof, it also has all these different controls. Now, focusing more on the steering wheel is kind of cool. It has this saddle leather all around it, which will basically age with the car. When driving Miami, you know, you're honking at everything, right? With a loud, angry horn. But if you take a look at this uh, steering wheel, zoom in, it has this little tube button with a cyclist on it. So Ineos, they are a company of many things. They are a cycling team. They are part of F1 and other sports. If you're behind a cyclist, you don't want to blare your horn at them. You want to just toot at them. It's a nice, gentle, hey, I'm behind you. Now, one thing that really throws me off in this cabin is the BMW shift knob it just does not go with everything else and with this type of price tag i would kind of expect them putting money into the shift knob to make it look apart the car seats which these seats are stain resistant so that's pretty awesome and basically most of the interior is meant to be sprayed down and hosed down and cleaned because they do have drain plugs now the b58 engine which is the one that's going to be coming into usa has 281 horsepower and 332 foot pounds of torque and with an estimated weight of 5,700 pounds, that's not a lot of power. I feel like the limitations will be the power in this machine. So although the Ineos Grenadier is a beautiful machine, mainly because it's basically mocking the design from the 110 Defender from the 90s, I have a few issues with it. You know, Land Rover isn't necessarily the most reliable vehicle either. Slapping a BMW engine in it, which not terrible, but not the most reliable engine, and a ZF transmission, which is known to be kind of finicky. Not what I was kind of expecting with a simple design that's meant to be able to allow the customer to work on their own cars, which is why the switches are switches and they can easily be unscrewed and popped out to assess whatever electrical issues that they could potentially have. And, and the whole design is basically meant to be where you can attach a whole bunch of aftermarket components to it, which once again, I think it looks beautiful. So let me know in the comment section down below, would you buy one? This is Chris with Automotivate. 
here to motivate anybody and everybody to get into cars, no matter the color of your hair, your gender, and where you come from. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you in the next video.